Hi, this is John Rule, and I wanted to give you a quick demonstration of how the Amusing Replacer software works uh, with controlling the front panel of your receptor. It's a communications gateway that will allow you to run software on the Windows operating system within your receptor. This is Windows running currently, the Amusing Replacer software running on the Windows operating system on my receptor. And we're going to press the power button on the front of that to initiate the communications. That's where the, the uh, script is right now. And once we press that power button, it will initialize the front panel so that it can communicate. And then we have the, all of the hooks in order to just send strings to line one and line two of the LCD display. And the string that I'm sending is just a default string. Welcome to the Amusing Replacer. You can replace that with whatever you want. That's all in the script of the uh, Amusing Replacer project file that's running within the IDE that's called the Runtime Editor. And, and what I will do now is I'll show you uh, just a, a quick loading of a project. In order to initiate the, the communications to get the list of files, uh, you press the uh, push to channel button and that loads the list of files that uh, right now we're pointing to the project folder of a program called Bajul from Plog Software. And I'm just scrolling through the list of layouts is what they call them. And once you select your file using the push for channel button, you can press the, the apply button below to actually load that. And I'll show you that in a second. The, uh, the text on the LCD display is updated by using two commands uh, for, for line one and line two. And it's very easy to just send a string to, uh, to the receptor front panel for updating. And you, you can send whatever you want to. Right now, I'm just sending the fixed string load Bajul program and then the, the, the name of the file in the layouts folder. But let's look at uh, the file that was loaded. Or first, what I'll do is I'll show you some of the button push strings. On the front panel itself, you get push and release commands from the buttons and you get dial left and right strings. As you can see here, you're getting push and release from the FXC, the mix, things of that nature. And uh, that is sending a command that you can respond to in this program. And it's totally editable. When you control either the user interface software or the front panel, you, you get this display updating in real time. So it's bi-directional communication. So right now the display on the front panel is updating as well. And uh, I do have a couple of buttons here that you can use. One of them is the edit that will actually take you into the editor. And this is a full IDE that you can use in order to make any changes that you want to. You get, you get all of the source code with the, for the amusing replacer. And these are objects that you can, you can manipulate. You can change the images. You can move them. It doesn't have to look like the front of the receptor at all. It can look like any interface that you want. And the, uh, the logic that is used is a scripting language that is event-driven. And uh, the events are push and release, as you can see. Right now, I'm going to show you the loop script that is managing all of the RS-232 communications between the front panel and uh, the software. And the, uh, when the communications port, COM port 1, is initialized, all of the information comes in and it's parsed in this loop and uh, the strings are parsed and depending on what the string uh, the string that is received I'm calling events possibly what this is doing is continuing the loop this do loop is calling itself that's you can call events on other objects including itself and the parsing is just uh, handling all of the strings and doing and uh, it's just checking whether a string equals push release and then doing an event that uh, is corresponding to that, to do push or do release. And there's the volume volume uh, code for handling the, the volume control. And right now I'll show you uh, the software, the VST host that's called Bajul from Plog Software. And this VST host is very, very powerful. This is the layout area where you, you uh, load your modules and then connect them by wiring them together in the uh, the layout environment and once you lay them out then the name and you save your preset the name will be reflected 
on the front panel when you scroll through the list. When you, uh, you press the uh, push to channel, push for channel button to update the list. And right now we'll just load another program, modulated uh, spectral graph, just to show you how responsive this is. And there is the uh, modulated spectral graph program that loaded. I just pushed the apply button on the front of the panel, selected it in the list, and then uh, that loaded right up. And the uh, front panel display also updated, as you can see. And right now I'm just controlling the front of the, of the receptor. And there's, I'll just do another load. Here's another program, the uh, a convoluted vocoder that loaded very quickly, as you can see. So both pr programs are very powerful, full-featured. And uh, now I'm out of the edit mode. And this is, uh, there are two modes. There's a windowed mode and a full screen mode. And this is what you will see when you go into the full screen mode. And you, we still have communications with the front panel of the receptor. I'm just turning the, uh, the push for channel dial to select different uh, programs. And I'll, I'll go ahead and load Crystal, which is a preset I have uh, programmed. And I'll go back into the uh, edit mode to show you that that program has loaded. So all of this is happening behind the scenes. There's Superwave P8. We should all know that one. And Crystal. Everybody should know Crystal. And that loaded. Uh, it's very responsive. And all of this happens without uh, doing it, without having a monitor out in the field. There's the module for Superwave P8. It's just wired up to the, the mixer module. And uh, that connects your audio. And... Uh, you, you create a, a MIDI module. I don't have that. I think the MIDI module is up where you can't see it. You just connect that to the, the top point on that module, and then you have MIDI communications. So you right-click, you do a right-click, and then create your VST instrument. And then you draw a connection between the output points and whatever you want to connect. So you can create your effects connections. Very, very complicated layouts. Very powerful. Here is another perspective of how I was controlling I was showing you the front panel separately from the software, and I just want to show you uh, both of them operating at the same time. So from the, from the front panel, I'm turning the dial to select a, a layout, and I'm just pressing the Apply button, and it's loading very quickly, very responsive. So all of this can happen out in the field without a monitor, and it works uh, works very well, very stable. And for those of you that like to do editing from the front panel, you can certainly tie in all of the uh, front panel buttons to your favorite features, uh, not only in Bejewel, but also in the uh, for controlling your VST instruments and your effects directly. Uh, I also wanted to show you one of the advanced features of the IDE, the data monitor, and that will show you all of your incoming and outgoing communications so that you can do your editing and debugging. Right now we're looking at RS-232, uh, communications from the front panel. You can also do TCP IP, UDP, OSC, uh, some MIDI, and other advanced protocols for editing. So it's a very full featured, full editor, very powerful uh, Visual software, and uh, the runtime editor I'm using Replacer.